Today on the Tiger Lacrosse Report, head coach Sean Madlin and I will take a look at the Tigers' wins over Loyola and UMBC. Get ready, Tiger fans. The Tiger Lacrosse Report starts now. AT&T knows the best kind of holiday is the kind where everyone gets what they wished for. Make this holiday extra happy when you buy one, get one free on our most popular smartphones, like the Samsung Galaxy S6. Buy one, get one free. So spread some cheer and capture every minute of it. Right now at AT&T, buy one, get one free on our most popular smartphones. How long does it take to change the game of basketball? Days, years, decades. How about 0.4 seconds? All of a sudden, big ain't so big no more. Small ain't so small. The step back three is the new dunk. Follow through is the new poster. Range is the new hang time. How long to change the game of basketball? One second or less. White Market's ice cream plant is based in Sunbury, Pennsylvania, and locally owned and operated. We've been making our ice cream for nearly 50 years. We create roughly 70 flavors of ice cream right now. We use local ingredients, especially our cream, which is from our milk plant. The cream is what gives our, our ice cream a rich and creamy texture. Now together with our customers, uh, we've created a a product called Peanut Butter Indulgence, which will be coming out this summer. It's a peanut butter ice cream with sea salt caramel swirl and chocolate covered pretzel. How could you go wrong with that? Personally, I love our ice cream. You come to our house at any given time, you'll find at least five packets of ice cream in our freezer. Uh, our kids grew up eating wise quality ice cream, and now we get to treat our grandchildren to it. It's been a pleasure for me to be tasting ice cream for over 40 years for Wise Markets, and uh, I'm loving every minute of it. Welcome to the Tiger Lacrosse Report, filmed inside the TSN studios in CQ Arena. I'm your host, Spiro Maricas. The Tigers took on a pair of local opponents in the then fourth-ranked Loyola Greyhounds and UMBC Retrievers. Towson came out with victories with a 10-8 win over Loyola and a drubbing of UMBC 14-6. Let's take a look at the highlights from both the wins getting in and they've done a good job of sliding recovering. There's a shot and a goal. It gets by Grant Lamone, Joe Cedar. And if you don't like the matchup, then you, know, you, you definitely go early. 10 seconds left, Drenner, he passes off. Here's a wind up and a fire and a shot and a goal. Around the crease, passing off. The wind up shot with the left hand and a goal by Tyler Conan to Young. And there's a big shot, a powerful one by Mike Lynch. Yeah, they're also getting... Drenner finds the cutter and a goal! Young, his pass, and a shot and a goal there! That's Spencer Parks! Passes back behind to Parks. Parks comes in, shoots, and scores! Underhanded shot there, and it's 8 nothing Tigers with 2.38 to go in the half. Had five saves there in that first half, but allowed nine goals. There's a shot and a score by Mazza. His second of the year for the freshman, and it's 10 nothing Tigers. Gets it over, trying to get it to Tyler Young. He couldn't handle it cleanly, but the Tigers. Kirby gets it, feeds up top to McCarty, who bounces one home. And Ben with his third goal of the day, and the Tigers lead 13-4 to with just two seconds left here in this third quarter. Now, and I don't know if that has to do a little bit with the hangover from the, the game against Loyola or what or the fact that you've been in control of this game the entire time. Spencer Parks from 12 yards out just fires one home, and it's 14-4. to 
And for Spencer, that's his second of the day. Tigers were just out of the top 10 last week. Now they are securely inside. Number six in some polls, five others nationally. And as always, I'm joined by the head coach of the Tigers, Sean Madlin. And coach, first of all, congratulations on the team getting a top five ranking. I know at this point you could care less, but uh, your concern is what's coming up and we need to look back. The game against Loyola, a team that had handled you pretty good the last couple of years. You go into Ridley Field and fell behind three to one. And I think the most impressive thing was your team didn't panic. You came right back, tied the game up, eventually took the lead. Yeah, and first off, thanks, Spiro. I appreciate that. And yeah, we, we don't look at the, the rankings until the season's over and kind of see where we are at that point. Um, that was our, our biggest focus going into the Loyola game, knowing that we haven't started well against those guys in recent, especially at Loyola. We have not played well there at all uh, the past couple times. So coming out, you know, dialed in, focused, and, and executing was what we were looking to do. And um, even though we had that small deficit, I was happy with how our guys continued to just, you know, stay, stay the course, stay within the game plan, not try to press. We weren't playing too tight, which was good to see. We were loose, we were confident. Um, you know, missed a couple opportunities, but you know, at, at, you know, as the game wore on, you know, I think we wore them down. You look at the stats from that game. They had a huge advantage in ground balls. Face-offs were pretty even. Um, penalty minutes were pretty even. The one difference was Tyler White had 16 saves. Loyola's goalie did not have 16 saves. The other thing was, and you mentioned this after the game, was you said to me that you didn't think Tyler made any extraordinary saves in that ball game, that the defense had, had moved Loyola around where they weren't getting great looks. Yeah, and that, you know, looking back at the film a couple of times, um, you know, kind of confirmed that with, with watching it. I think there was maybe two saves where Tyler, you know, had to get a little bit, you know, outside of himself to, to get a good save, make a clean one where I thought we had better opportunities that their goalie, Grant Lamone, made against us to, to kind of keep us at bay. You know, they had a couple more steal uh, opportunities on their end. But um, our, our defense, I think, did a pretty good job of forcing the lower angle shots or the contested outside, you know, outside range shots. Um, they probably didn't shoot as well as they'd like as far as getting shots on cage. I know um, Haywires, who's a, a terrific offensive threat, uh, was missing the cage a few times, which was fortunate for us and, and uncharacteristic of him, which obviously helped us out. But, you know, I thought Tyler stuck true and, and having 16 saves is, is a good day. So that was a great win for you guys. Then you've got the situation of you've got another game just a couple of days later against UMBC, a team that has struggled early on. They were 0-2. How much of a worry was it that your team might have a letdown going into the Retriever game because you had gotten that signature win that you haven't gotten in years past? Yeah, it was a concern. Um, we saw it last year. We beat Hopkins in the opening game. Then we come out flat against Loyola. They jump all over us. We kind of scratch and claw, didn't quite get back to even with them. But, you know, at the end of the day, they, you know, they won, I think, by three or four last year because we started out flat and started out slow. You know, this, you know, this is what we've emphasized from day one in the fall with regards to handling success, understanding that we're capable of achieving, you know, wins against everybody, but we're also capable of losing if we don't prepare and step into the game ready to go. Uh, so that was something we continue to emphasize after the Loyola win. Uh, I thought our guys did a, a really good job coming out against like, or, uh, UMBC, you know, pressing the issue, taking good opportunities. Tyler y Young setting the tone, you know, right off the bat within 40 seconds of the game, start of the game, uh, and our defense doing a, a pretty good job. We were sloppy um, throughout the game, which I wasn't overly happy with. I think that was probably a little bit of our lack of mental focus tied in with our physical fatigue from the previous games. Um, but you know, I was happy with the way we started against UMBC and came out of the third quarter. Out of the third quarter against UMBC, I would think so. You led nine nothing at halftime, <laughs> built it up to twelve nothing. Right. And the thing that was great against UMBC was your first nine goals, eight different guys scoring. So mm -hmm. obviously, it was not a one-man show or a two-man show. It was a completely team effort on the offensive end. Right, and that's something we continue to emphasize, Coach Gillardi and our offensive guys sharing the ball, everybody getting you know getting a look when they when it comes their way you know and we're not trying to be selfish and taking selfish shots we wanted to share the ball and we wanted to capitalize on the opportunities all right well the tigers now run their record up they are five and oh that will do it for today's episode of the tiger lacrosse report in our next episode we'll preview the tigers game against their final local opponent 
the Johns Hopkins Blue Jays and their upcoming game against the Buckeyes of Ohio State. For head coach Sean Nadlin, I'm Spiro Marikas, and as always, go Tigers.